Thanks for coming today. Speaker is hard to pray. We will talk about the yoga of these beautiful antagonists. And there's a subtitle called Strutting and Stringing Polyhedrally Scaffolded Tensegrities. There's a joke if you think about Bertie Madoff, because he liked to strut it and string people along. But this strutting here refers to these, and the stringing refers to this golden cord. The colors, the theme of the colors is my college, Wofford College in Spartanburg, South Carolina, my undergraduate college, that was the school colors, old gold and black. So the first thing I want to do is bring this back. Um, I made a page for this right here, and I ran a workshop a week ago at the College of New Jersey in which 23 of my students, it was like a finite math course, made these. Uh, oh, that's great. Oh, there, it's sort of slow. Okay, there's, there's one picture. There's another photo. These are from, a student took these with his cell phone. And then, I had nine boxes like this, and groups of three students helped each other to make three of these in succession. And each one got one to take home with themselves. And you see that? Here's a fourth one. Those are the co chairs of the math department. I don't really have their permission to put them up here, but uh, he was catching up with email and Kathy Lee. This is Tom Haggard, going to PhD from Harvard under Benedict Gross and Kathy Liebers, who's in math education. And that's a, one of my students who's happy she just made one of those. And this is uh, some more students. And that's one of the best pictures I've liked that. Now, I'll show you the last photograph later. Now, these are some of the you can actually make the domes with some of these. The people that make tensegrities, as far as I know, don't have any scaffolding to them, and they never talk about any scaffolding. That's what's different. And I talk a little bit about this here, and I'll talk more about it now on, on that page. And so there's some tensegrities that uh, I have no idea how to make according to my procedure. Um, there's a nice book on. Well, there's a famous book on tensegrities by Pew. And this is a 150-page book. And it mainly puts forth the idea that you can use nonlinear programming, quadratic programming, in order to come up with a relationship between the strings and the struts so that you will have equilibrium. My approach is different, so you don't really have to calculate anything. Then um, there's an article in American Scientist about tensegrities. There was a recent article in, I think, the notices. What is a tensegrity? I didn't put a link to that yet, but there will be a link to that. Boy, that's really, uh, I guess it's a PDF problem. It's slow to come in, so I'm going to skip that. Um, and Connolly and Whitley, or Whiteley, oh, that's coming in better. They've written about the rigidity. Connolly's the first one that discovered a flexing polyhedron, which I don't think was convex. And it doesn't mean continuously flexing. It means that you can rearrange the faces in another rigid way. I think that's what, we're not going to talk about that. And let's see what else there is that I have links to. Um, this, there are, lot, there are hundreds of papers on, on tensegrity. These are just 41 papers, and those are all clickable. So you can see any of those you'd like. Uh, this, this is an amusing one. I don't know whether we're going to get any sound with this or not. It's not really important. Uh, when you click on this, there's a movie that comes up, and you don't see anything right away. From here, you'll see something coming in here. 
Everybody see that? Yeah. This is, um, I think, from the state of Washington. It doesn't really have anything to do with the legalization of marijuana. <laughs> but uh, I might be surprised. You, know, you can look at that later if you'd like to. Uh, there are hundreds of these. These are. This is an amazing page. By the way, that is Kenneth Nelson himself. Uh, he's the inventor of these. But Buckminster Fuller expropriated the invention, and he named it integrity, coming from tension and integrity. Although that wasn't a, a very good exhibition of integrity to steal somebody's idea and take it as your own. But I guess Nelson didn't mind that much. They both patented some integrity. And that's online as well. But these are some very interesting uh, tensegrities. That one right there is, is one that uh, you'll see here on the table. I'm going to switch and talk to some of these in one minute. Uh, this is a sculpture. That's what these are. These are sculptures. Of course, there's a lot of mathematics behind it. And I was going to show you some of it, but I think I want to change the focus. Okay. You've seen this done before. I'm not going to put Tim Segre on my shirt. And the meaning for that is that with these sca the scaffolding, everyone really can make one of these. The first Oh, I didn't. Oh, yes, I did. I hit it here. I've been through a succession of these. The very first one I made in order to make the simple one that you see here. This is the one I'm going to create for you. I'm going to do that in 10 minutes for you. Take about 10 minutes. It was this. I wanted them to be perpendicular. And I actually put a hole in the dowel and filled it later with plastic wood, but then I couldn't paint these until after I'd strung it. It was sort of a drag. It could be done. But now, instead of using that, as you can see on here, I created hundreds of these little aluminum brackets. So you might say this was the pre-bracket phase. Post-bracket phase, you can print, you can make hundreds of these at once, these dowels, and, and uh, put the brass in the end in order to string it. This, of course, is a solid tetrahedron. And I found a way to strut it. That's what I use that as a verb. And it can be strung as well. And it's one of these four strut ones here. I didn't, uh, didn't even number these or even name these. But um, there's one with four struts. It could well be this one. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. No, actually, I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it because it was unpainted. Um, it was like this, but four of these dowels touch. And that's a no-no in tensegrity. They're not supposed to touch. And they touch when I used this smaller tetrahedron. When I made a larger tetrahedron with these triangles, then here it is. That's from a larger tetrahedron, same strutting pattern. Same stringing pattern, of course, too. Now, one of the important stringing patterns that makes things work, if you take a little careful look at this, and it's a guiding principle on stringing any <coughs> strutted scaffolding. If you look at each strut, you see there's a diamond of string around it. That's a good guiding principle when you're trying to string something you've strutted. It works also for this. Right here, this was, if you look on YouTube, how to build, oh, by the way, this is called a noctahedron. This is a wire one. I don't like those quite as well. I can't get them as tight. But this one is called the acosahedron because if you put in the extra string that is unnecessary to make this stable, you'll get an acosahedron. It won't be quite an acosahedron because you don't just have three struts mutually perpendicular meeting in the middle. If you did that, we'd be a perfect icosahedron. So the way that YouTube tells you to make this is 
The strings are all a certain length. These are slotted. Uh, Ten Segretory was a company that, that made these. Get the strings exactly the right length, hook them up just the right way, and voila, it happens. Well, I was a little stupider than that. I did it like this. Took a cube. Now, once I've strung it, I can't get that cube out of there, obviously. But once I've strung it, I have to undo the brackets. You see these two screws here? There were two screws on the bottom as well. I didn't have to undo all of those, because as soon as I separated this slab from the other two, I could wiggle them out. So, so the next thing I would, actually I, don't, I didn't make another one here because I've used up all my triangles and I can make more. But the next thing I made was, after the tetrahedron, was what you call a bipyramid, where you have three triangles on top and three triangles on the bottom. And I was able to start and string that. That has one, two, three, four, five vertices. Now, there's, a, there's one around here with five struts. And that's the one I made with that. If you can see one here with five struts. That's the one that I made with that. I think that has six. We have one over here with five. That's it. Now, that was made, strangely enough, with this uh, die pyramid. That's it. That's what, that's what I came out with. None of them were touching it, at least. Then, after that, I said, okay, take an octahedron. So, one of these is stringable, and one of these is not stringable. Now, the first one I did was stringable, and that's here somewhere, too. I don't know which one it is. But, since you have, oh, I didn't finish with that, with a die pyramid. You have one, two, three, four, five vertices, but you have six faces. Since you don't want two struts to go through the same vertex, you can only you can only stretch five of the faces. Well, I made a good choice. I guess you could leave anyone on, on strife. So, when I, and, and that worked. For this one, there are six vertices and eight faces. So you have to leave two out. The first one I did, it turned out the ones that I left out were adjacent. And that's here somewhere. I don't know which one it is. Then, the next thing I sat down to prove was the sketching was that I could leave any two faces unstrutted. I haven't made one with these two faces unstrutted, like that, touching in the vertex. Probably it could be both strutted and strung. I don't know. Open question. Whatever. But what I got interested in was opposite faces being unstrutted. And this is the first one I tried. See how regular that is going around? Vertex, face. Vertex uh, edge. That's the first one I tried. Can you string it? If you have three parallel struts, can you string it? If there are three parallel struts, right parallel to one another, can you string that? Got a 50 50 shot, right? It won't work. It won't work no matter how you think about it. You cannot strut three parallels. These were almost parallel. I could not string this for my life. I tried and tried and tried three or four times. Each time I strung it, what did I have to do? I didn't have to take away all the brackets for the inside, but I had to take away a certain number of the brackets inside to get that figure out, because you're not going to get that out unless you somewhat disassemble. That's the whole idea of making these scaffoldings, is you, they have to be disassemblable. So this did not string. This would not string. So, I said, okay, not so regular. Let's hit a vertex on a vertex of this face with this face. Down here, let's hit the edge over here and the vertex on the next one underneath. The next one here will hit this vertex. This works. You can string this. And that's one of these two. Again, I forget which one it is. But it has six struts on it. Um, it could be this one, because this almost looks like a tower, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. This could well be it, because this, this looks like a tower. I don't think it is a tower. I think that's a tower, too. Kenneth Nelson made a needle tower 60 feet tall. And uh, I'd like to make some outside ones. I just started this a couple of months ago. I remember walking around with a couple I borrowed from an artist friend of mine, telling everybody that, hey, I haven't made one yet uh, here. Didn't I show you some of those? This is, I think I showed you one like this out of copper. And 
one like this, which was very, very springy. These are not, these don't have as much play as the usual ones because they're tighter, because you can string the strings as tightly as you want to, subject not to breaking the struts. It looks like that one right there, it looks like it's arranged similarly to the Akasa. I agree, I, th I think yeah. that's it. Um, yeah, this is similar to the, uh, to the Akasa Hebrew. Sorry, the, uh, but you notice they're not right angles. This, I think, is that one right here. You, were, you found it. That was this one. You can almost see it. But they're, they're, see how these two are parallel? You're right. Those two are parallel, and these two are parallel like that. But they're not perpendicular, so it's not like the Akasahedron. All right, now, tetrahedron, these two octahedron, um, towers. Okay, now, my first attempt at stringing towers didn't work, and that's why this is my third attempt. I did it with wire, so I wouldn't waste much string. I don't know, it's probably more expensive. But I finally were able to do it. And the pattern, you can't see it so readily with this. Look at that. You put kinks in the wire, unless you could lay out the whole wire, and as you turn it, you, you could sort of unkink it as you went along. But that, that's why wire didn't work too well. And that shouldn't be that loose. But the pattern here is, um, it's, it's obviously not the pattern, the diamond pattern, because you've got something going across here. So it's not the diamond pattern. This pattern is across. Oh, and this is the scaffolding that I use. I put them close enough so that this would go below, these would cross over, and turn at an angle so that this is supposed to be halfway between this and this. It obviously isn't. Could, could you rotate the, that scaffolding? Yeah, nice. This shouldn't be closer than that. Those should be about the same distance. But that's all artistic. That's not important to stability at all. Okay, so here's here's the stringing that worked. A triangle. Then at the second level, triangle, quadrilateral, triangle, quadrilateral, triangle, quadrilateral. Next level, quadrilateral, all quadrilaterals. Next level, all quadrilaterals. Next level, triangle, quadrilateral. That procedure works. Because when I was first doing it, I had some five-sided figures, and I thought, and of course, it's very frustrating. As soon as I started taking these things out, it all fell apart. I mean, not stringable. At least, at least not the, with that geometry. It's not unstringable like, like this is unstringable because it's too regular. Not that. All right. So that's a tower. That's a level two tower. So it's just like this. Can you tell by stability? What? Can you tell a priori? Because the more you do, the better you can. Uh, it's not even clear. See, nobody, since nobody's thinking of it this way, they're not thinking of the struts as fixed relative to one another. Well, I'm going to talk to some people who do the math because yeah. it's, uh, it's very, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a very, it's a PDEs. You know, I could show you some PDEs up here that Conway uses and Skelton uses. No kid to Red Skelton. How will you be PDE? Why not be studying? Dynamic. Well, that's right. They're, they've just begun to study the dynamics of these. In other words, like so, ah, that. Okay. Initially, they studied the statics. Yeah. And that was nonlinear programming yeah. and uh, anti symmetric matrices and good old stuff like that. Um, but again, I personally, right now, am more interested in other things. Now, Twenty faces. How many vertices? Twelve. Twelve. So how many do you have to leave blank? How many do you have to leave unstrutted? Eight. Well, here's a cool eight to leave unstrutted. Focus on this edge right here. I can hold this up to the camera. Focus on, on uh, I'll get this done in a minute. Focus on this edge here. Dot, 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 dot. See those four? Can you see them? There's four on the other side, too. Those are the eight I left out. I have not strung this yet. Once I string it, then I have to disassemble it. Not looking forward to that. I would try to do the diamond shape. I don't like the way this crosses over for this one right here. But that might work too. I would use the diamond shape to, to string it. 
but I'm not going to try to string it here. What I am going to do for you now, we have plenty of time, I'm going to build one of these for you right now. You saw, oh, now I'm going to show you that last picture. That I didn't show you before. Let's see if I can get back to my page. You can still see that. Let's see, tensegrity power. Seventh picture I didn't show you. It's taken by a different person. It'll come in a minute, I guess. Okay? That's the TCNJ. I didn't want to show you that because I hadn't revealed my shirt yet. <laughs> um, so, I had made nine of these boxes, and students in groups of three each made three consecutively, so each person got one. There were 23 students. And each of them, it took 60 minutes, because they had done it, even though they had to dress a rehearsal the day, the class before that. So, what is in each box is this. I thought incorrectly that that was the golden mean. I must have done some wrong arithmetic. In other words, if you want to make this such that if you put these diagonally like that, then they will be perpendicular on the block and they remain perpendicular when you take the block out. It doesn't have to be the golden mean in order for that to happen. You can, you, it's just a nice little bit of geometry. One and the square root of two. That will make these diagonal ones perpendicular to one another. If you go up here, up here, and up here. That's easy to derive. Just, just put an equilateral triangle sitting, sitting in the upper half plane, centered on the y-axis, and let the z be arbitrary. And, and require that those three three-dimensional vectors be perpendicular, and you'll get the same condition. The, the height squared has to be two. All right, so I'm going to build one for you now. Now, you're seeing this in microcosm of what the students had. There's nine feet of string there, more than enough. Eight's enough for me. But I thought some students might need more than that. 25 after. Let's see if I finish by 25 bucks. Not, not running out of time, right? But the clock seems to be going nice and slow today, though. Right? Right? Yeah, you got it so long. Right. Oh, I can't get this. Oh, there I go. So the first thing. I'm not ready to string it yet, but I'll take it out anyway. I put it in that so it wouldn't fall apart. So here's the procedure. Uh, move this. Can everybody see me from here? Okay. We need a screwdriver, which is magnetic. We need three struts, which I didn't bring. That was silly of me. So you can order them. I'm going to disassemble one of these. Okay. Assembly. Uh, how do you order them? What? Online in some places. You see? I need three struts. So I'm going to show you how to build them. Yeah, but how I, didn't, I didn't put three struts in there. How do you get them if you want them? How do you buy them? From me, I'll sell them to you. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't sold these at flea market yet. <laughs> so this is an extra three or four minutes. Sorry about that. I put everything in there with the stuff, put the struts. That was the first thing. Okay. I'm going to tell you a very interesting omen while I'm doing this. Uh, since I was in a rush to get all this stuff done for the talk, I brought to William Patterson because I have I teach an 8 to 9 15 class and then I don't teach again until 3 30. So I, I did the work there. They were already drilled. The, the holes were drilled in the ends. So I brought some screws, packages of these screws. These are number four by half inch long brass screws that you can get at Home Depot. And so I had actually that box was full of, of struts, unpainted struts, because I screwed them in before I, I did that. And I threw a bunch of uh, brass screws out of this container, plastic container, onto my desk. And I grabbed a handful of struts out of my, out of that box, because they were about 60. And I grabbed about 20. I didn't count. Just grabbed some. Then, 
they were exactly the same number. And while I was pondering how unlikely that was, not to be one greater, not to be one less, I still had more to do. So I emptied the rest of the brass screws onto the desk after having experienced that very unusual circumstance and grabbed another handful out of the box without counting them. Same again. Remember, I dumped the rest of the screws on the table. Same number again. I said it was twice. And then I had another box. I put some of them out. Not all, some of them out. And grabbed the last of the dowels. And I looked at them and said, they can't be true. They can't be true. And they were. Three times in a row. Omen. Whatever. I, I'm not a religious guy, I don't think. Maybe spiritual, not religious. Now that we've got these, now we can start. So, this one is the one in the square to two model, like that. And I did bring the screws, I was careful to bring those. And for these, I don't use gold screws. Actually, I use brass. The gold ones don't dig in as the wood as well. Eventually, one could make that out of plastic, I guess, or it could be manufactured. Oh. So we need three of these brackets. I'm not going to go into how these brackets are made. But the first one here, I don't mind if I sit down. I'll put this, is that the right one? Is that the one I want? It'll work. Let me check real quick. Didn't I have one here? Is that the one I was talking about? I'll tell you what I can do. I can take the one that, that didn't work, and if this is the same, oh, oops, that's uh, the golden mean. That's all right. I know how to deal with that. I put that on for the students so they know. But since it's not the golden mean, it has to be sharp. Three this word or two. So put this on, hold this on. The students could help each other. Unfortunately, this is magnetic. Right in there. That's cool. I'll have to dig it in. At this stage, how crucial is it that you get that angle exactly what you were going for? The better you get it, the more perpendicular the struts will be after they're strong. Okay. Well, so it'll be rigid. It'll be. It'll, it'll hang together no matter what. Oh. Because you, it's in other words, the stability isn't crucial at all. I mean. That's not crucial to the stability of it. It's only crucial to the geometry of it. Okay, so here's, there's one. And the second one's a little bit harder, so you have to sort of go like this. And take the second stride. And the center of this, this is, uh, I think it's, I put it on a saw blade to do that and then paint it, so it'd be about the center. I'm not measuring really that exactly. Well, this is perfect, fantastic. Okay. 